Right within the shadows of the city of Albuquerque sits a place from another time. With more than 17,000 acres of mesa top land, 18 miles of hiking trails, and a calmness and mystery that has beckoned visitors from all over the world. If you listen, it will speak to you. To the Pueblo people, um, the Albuquerque volcanoes are the center of the middle Rio Grande Pueblo universe. What I mean by that is, to the Pueblo people, their world was like a large bowl, with the Sandia Mountains to the east being one rim of that bowl, and Mount Taylor, 65 miles to the west, being the other rim of that bowl. And the highest point in the bottom of that large, broad bowl are the Albuquerque volcanoes, five volcanic cones that exist today right here in the heart of Albuquerque. To the Pueblo people, these drawings have been here since the beginning of time. Modern archaeologists date them back as far as the 1300s. Through conversations with the Pueblo people, we learn that this site is much more than a living museum of artwork drawn on rocks. And they've told us that as they were living in these villages down by the Rio Grande, when their ancestors died, they believed that the spirits of their ancestors would travel up to this place. And they called this place the place that people speak about. They would say prayers, they would make offerings, and they would use stone chisels and hammers to peck a braid, carve and incise the dark black patina off the rock, exposing the lighter color of the, the rock itself. And they believe that it would be through these petroglyphs that the spirits of their ancestors would leave this world and continue on to the next world. Visitors have many reasons for coming out here, but for Chris Candelario, the petroglyphs are a photographer's dream. I come out here in all weather. I've been out here when it's been 100 degrees, 102, to uh, sub-freezing, I mean down to 10 degrees. And over the years, uh, I think I've shot around seven or 8,000 uh, petroglyphs. I mean, I've really made it sort of a uh, photographic mission. But for Chris, the site is much more than a place to shoot pictures. I think that it's just very, uh, very peaceful out here, very sacred. Not only do I come out here and photograph uh, all the different types of images, but I also uh, find it uh, a place of respect, a place of beauty. I mean, there's beauty in the desert, semi-desert, tropical areas, and I just find this place amazing. And this national park is just phenomenal. It's one of the great places in, uh, in not only in Albuquerque, but in New Mexico. For Chris, there is a mystery too. Legend has it that petroglyphs choose when and who to reveal themselves to. There are different petroglyphs in different times and different areas. It's not like all of a sudden they disappear and hide in the rocks, but in a way they do. For other visitors, the Petroglyph National Monument is a learning experience as well as a recreational one. Prior to people living in villages in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, people were nomadic and they were hunters and gatherers and they would follow the herds around and because they were hunters, uh, when they caught something they would stop, camp and eat and then they would move again and they would move again. Um, and that yeah. occurred for about 10,000 years. Lois Pete knew this place was special the first time she saw it. Now she's brought back her sister all the way from New Jersey. My son lives here, and so we come for a visit, and here I haven't been to the Petroglyphs for a couple of years, and I thought it would be great, you know, coming back with my sister. And for locals, it's the perfect place to find some peace and quiet away from the bustling city, a place locals are still discovering. Unless you knew this existed, uh, or someone told you, uh, you're, you're never gonna know. So it probably takes a little bit of initiative on people's parts to look for something to do. But um, nonetheless, it's right in everyone's backyard here. And Souter is an original of sorts here as well. She was the park's first employee after Congress made the monument designation back in 1990. And with more than 20,000 document images, we discover that other cultures left images here as well. Later on, the Spanish who were here in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, who lived down by the river as well, uh, came up here to graze their sheep. At one time, we had over 2 million head of sheep up here on the West Mesa. 
Um, there are many different stories about uh, the sheep herders, uh, but they too put about 5% of the images onto the rocks. And the images that we would see from the Spanish colonial period would be sheep brands or crosses. There are some ground rules. Respect is a word we hear often. The most important thing um, that we ask people not to do is to touch the images. The oils from our hands can actually um, damage the petroglyphs themselves. We ask that you not climb on top of the images and respect this place. This is a sacred place, as if it were a cathedral or a church. Despite her many years of service, Diane hasn't lost her sense of wonderment and knows that when visitors leave here, they too gain a new respect for these timeless drawings. I love to bring people out here for the first time and see their emotional connection to the resource. Oh, ah, look at that. And I know that I may not have changed the way they think about petroglyphs today, but maybe a month from now or maybe a year from now, they're gonna think about these petroglyphs and how important these resources are, not just to the people here in New Mexico, but people from all over the world. For more information on Petroglyph National Monument, including the trails and ours, log on to nps.gov slash p-e-t-r.